Hey folks, welcome. I want to talk about impossible constructions with the straight edge and compass. So here's how I think about it. <laughs> these days we have these hard open problems like is P equals to NP, either prove it or prove not, or um, the Riemann hypothesis. Is there, um, are all of the zeros of this Riemann zeta function you know, on this particular vertical line, either prove it or, or find a counterexample. So there are these various problems in math and computer science, you know, at least um, a half dozen of them, that if you prove them, you know, uh, you get a million dollars. These millennial problems or the, maybe it's the clay millennial prize. So I think different areas of mathematicians, they all have their, uh, their own hard open problems. And if, if you were alive in the time of the ancient Greeks, you knew that you could construct many things with a straight edge and compass. You could uh, take perpendicular bisectors of angle, uh, of edges. You can bisect an angle. You could even sort of construct square roots. You know, if I want to take the square root of some number, I, I draw that side length on both sides and then, um, well, okay. Um, let's say I wanted to construct the square root of two. I draw a side length one, I draw a side length one, and then this side length here is the square root of two. So the Greeks knew how to construct all of these various things. But there were other things that they tried to construct that they failed. They couldn't figure out how to do. So one of them is squaring a circle. So let me describe this. I give you a circle, say, with radius 1. So what's the area of the circle? The area is pi, because it's pi r squared, or pi times 1 squared. What they wanted to construct is they wanted to construct a square with the same area. They wanted to construct a square with area pi, which would mean you'd have to be able to construct the side length, which is the square root of pi, okay? So they, um, they struggled to construct the square root of pi with the straight edge and compass, and, and nobody could do it, but they also couldn't prove that it was impossible. So I think many of them believed it was possible, they just couldn't, they weren't yet clever enough to do it. Another impossible construction is trisecting an arbitrary angle. So some angles can be trisected. 72 degrees can be trisected. But other angles, and most angles, can't be trisected. So um, 60 degrees is an example angle that can't be trisected. What, what do I mean by trisecting an angle? Let's say this is an angle alpha. To trisect, would, it would mean to divide it into three, where, where each of those bits is, is um, you know, is, is the same number of degrees. Okay. So in general, given an arbitrary angle, there's no construction for how to trisect it. And again, the Greeks couldn't do it, but they also couldn't prove it was impossible. Many of them thought it was possible, they just weren't clever enough yet. And finally, um, doubling the cube. This one seems like it's in 3D, but I can phrase this as really, you know, living in the plane where our straight edge and compass actually work. But I have a cube, all of the side lengths are one, it has volume one. I want to construct a cube that has volume two. So what would that mean? That would mean taking your cube and sort of blowing it up until it has twice the volume. And if it has twice the volume, then what's the side length of an edge? the cube root of two, because for the cube on the left, the side length is one, so the volume is one cubed or one, and then the cube on the right, the length of an edge is the cube root of two, so the volume is the cube root of two cubed, which is two. I mean, how you should think about this is, is actually, I give you a, a side length, which has length one, you know, say this side length, and then you're supposed to use your straight edge and compass to build a, a side length 
which is the key root of two, namely this sign number. Okay, so that's a way you can phrase this living in the plane, where you can draw things using using your straight edge and compass. You don't need to think about this three D. Only much later, after abstract algebra, groups, fields, rings, and Galois theory, which is sort of um, a, a more advanced topic in algebra, only, only once groups, rings, fields, algebra was invented, could mathematicians finally prove that these constructions are impossible, okay? So using algebra, you can prove that the only, if you start with this edge of length one, the only edge lengths, for example, that you can construct are those obtained from the integers via a fi finite sequence of addition, subtraction, multiplication, um, division, or square root operations. So you could construct lengths of the form, I don't know, you know, one plus three square root of five. And then once you can construct that, you can construct, I don't know, two times the square root of that. And then once you can construct that, you can take another square root, okay? But you can construct any rational number. You know, I could replace um, five here with 17 thirty-firsts, right? Because rational numbers can be obtained using multiplication and division from the integers. But you can't construct pi. Okay, there's no way you can construct pi or the square root of pi. Um, and you can't also, you can't construct cube roots. Okay, so doubling the cube is sort of related to the fact that you can't compute cube roots. And uh, squaring a circle is related to the fact that you can't compute this, uh, you can't construct this transcendental number pi or its square root. And in the next video, I'll give you a hint of some of the algebra that's used in, in proving that these are impossible. Any public questions? Thanks so much.